Kinnick Jainab Packel I was known by many names. Packel, Packel the Great, Eight Ahu, Sunshield, the list goes on. He was the leader of the Maya city-state of Palenique, and according to academia, this rule and the subsequent exquisite ruins left by his reign occurred within the late classic period of Mesoamerican chronology. Undoubtedly, the most astonishing relic left by this past king, and the artifact which has fueled countless ancient astronaut theories, is the casing stone found atop his tomb. Clearly depicting some form of advanced machine, yet the question has persisted. What was the type of machine? Or indeed, what was its past function? Are we peering upon a schematic for an ancient spacecraft? Why would a king that we feel is clearly from a lost civilization go to such considerable effort having this contraption depicted upon his burial chamber? Before his name was securely deciphered from extant Maya inscriptions, only within the last few decades, may I add, little was known of this intriguing ruler. He had been known by an assortment of nicknames, and we find it interesting that, regardless of the clearly advanced knowledge bestowed within the ancient constructions of such sites, academics continue to create suspiciously complete timelines surrounding these structures, their rulers, and even dating the builds. Yet their explanations as to how these tasks were completed are utterly absent from the thousands of books written funded, supported, and published by this select group of influential individuals. However, during our own research, we have found a compelling lead regarding this ancient site. A set of images, purportedly showing an artifact once found beneath Pockold's tomb. And although we have been unsuccessful in finding any more photography of the artifact, we have found out where it is currently being held. The Mexican National Museum What makes this particular artifact so compelling to us is its resemblance to rocket thrusters. Its deliberately sculpted shape is uncanny of a three-cone rocket and was clearly not intended to be an ornament with such an awkward form. This artifact, if indeed depicting some form of ancient thruster, throws up some rather controversial yet astonishing questions. Is it a mere basalt sculpture? Or is it actually made from some sort of metal? Was this artifact created by Paco? Was it his idea? Or was it a craft that his people found and subsequently brought to him? A vessel Paco attempts to depict on the case of his tomb. According to the very limited information we were able to extrapolate from the web, it is being housed within the bowels of the Mexican National Museum. We are unfortunately yet to find any more pictures of this clearly compellingly shaped artifact that was once found beneath a tomb many feel actually depicts a space-going craft. Why has there not been more heard of this intriguing artifact? Is it being hidden by the Mexican government? We find the shape of this artifact, its found location, and its clear academic elusiveness as highly compelling. Ancient Uparts A section of ancient history which many find as their preference, it is undeniably one of the strongest areas of argument within the study of antiquities which is in support of the past existence of once highly capable, incredibly technologically advanced, yet now lost ancient civilizations. The ancient astronaut theory being one main topic of interest within the Uparts realm. When it comes to certain current or now past allies, in alliance with our so often reiterated posit of the existence and the volumes of surviving evidence in support of a now lost, often also claimed, now actively hidden, enormous number of chapters of human history. It is thanks to their laborious collaborative efforts which has allowed us to accomplish such a strong and compelling evidence in addition, the realization that much of these sites and anomalous features also display a strong evidential suggestion that many of these civilizations somehow succumbed suddenly, possibly to a past cataclysm. However, if this vast and still growing file of evidence 
all suggesting sudden demise, is, in the future, somehow found to have been an undeniable reality, possibly a repeated event. A question arises. Who could these claimed ancient astronauts possibly have been? The evidence suggesting sudden halts in undertaking, within countless elaborately created, by clearly highly resourced people, megalithic quarries, which were inexplicably abandoned, litter our planet. This may suggest that these uparts are either of returning, unfortunate witnesses to this cataclysm, somehow returning many generations later, successfully making contact with a civilization raised from the ashes of their now-forgotten world. Somehow surviving all this time in an ancient spacecraft, possibly better, possibly similar to our own modern space stations, absent long enough to be depicted by a people presumably astonished by their existence. Secondly, they could quite possibly depict ancient alien visitors to our planet, either once deliberately making contact or once crashing here, forcing these entities to make contact, thus witnessed. Yet, if true, their likeness to Earthlings is a controversial consequence to said history or are all somehow a mere coincidence. One or two hoaxes, we feel, is a real reality. But for all these magnificent, enigmatic, and often clear depictions of similarly-looking individuals, all being hoaxes? Yet so far separated geographically, we find unlikely. One must keep this in mind when studying such artifacts, such as the Istanbul rocket. The claimed ancient space module, which became one of the most popular artifacts of the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Sought after by Western scientists and media alike, poured over and written about in hundreds of articles across Europe. Even featuring on television programs and within many newspaper articles. However, what is fascinating about this reality, that for many years, many specialists, often talented people, also just as often funded to presumably determine an inaccuracy in the object's claimed age, did not. Not until a few years ago, that is. In the last few years, it has been that the Istanbul rocket was apparently found to have been a hoax. A plaster cast made some 25 years ago. A puzzling claim when one remembers that just five years after, the space module was sought after by German and English among many other national archaeologists, and was, for a long time, secured in the preservation unit of the museum. Was this really a plaster cast, a mere five years old when this discovery was announced, successfully fooling the world's scientific communities? Or was it like so many other artifacts we study, successfully stolen, then replaced with a clear fake? We will leave that up to you to decide from the evidence available. But. An argument for found crash craft can also be seen in the inspiration for the creation of things, like that of the lid of Pakal's tomb. An enigmatic depiction of this same form of technology, again, turns up all over South America, and even further afield. The Kiev spaceman, yet another found far away in the remote, desolate landscapes of Ukraine. Clearly, a depiction of a gas-breathing humanoid-shaped being depicted with seemingly no injuries, yet the reason for said depiction is an ongoing debate, yet due to its clear characteristics, a welcome member of this long list of ancient uparts. Ancient astronauts? Or merely an extremely elaborate, highly complex, hard-worked, long-lived hoax? We find the evidence to support the theory highly compelling. In 1963, NASA launched its final manned mission during the Mercury program. On board the Atlas IX rocket known as Faith 7 was pilot astronaut Gordon Cooper. Project Mercury was the first human spaceflight program of the United States, running from 1958 through 1963. An early highlight of the space race, its goal was to put a man into Earth orbit and return him safely before the Russians. Cooper's cool-headed performance and piloting skills led to a basic rethinking of design philosophy for later space missions. While Cooper was stuffed into his tiny module for 32 hours during his orbit, he was tasked with a covert mission, the results of which have only recently come to light. 
he was given a cutting-edge piece of long-range magnetic detection technology, which was installed into a camera on board the Faith 7 spacecraft. His mission while on board was to capture images of the globe using this sensing technology, to locate any possible secret nuclear development sites, which could be considered a threat to America. During this procedure, Cooper became aware of an amazing capability which the camera possessed. Not only was it sensing possible hidden bases, but was also capturing anomalies deep in the oceans of Earth. Cooper deduced that these pings were actually all the shipwrecks which dot the ocean floors from throughout history which had been spotted by the machine due to the considerable amount of metals within the wrecks. It seems having the courage to go into space, and the intelligence and reflexes to survive the experience, will endow you with some very special rewards, in the most unlikely of forms. What this mission had given to Cooper was a treasure map of Earth, which no other person could possibly possess. Cooper dutifully recorded the geographical coordinates of the anomalies as was required of him, and when he returned to Earth, he also mapped them out on a sea chart which became known as the treasure map from space, by his lifelong friend, and renowned treasure hunter, Roger Milkos. Throughout the rest of his life, Cooper would secretly compile substantial research regarding historical shipwrecks that corresponded with the locations on the space map. Cooper had planned to organize expeditions to find the treasures, but unfortunately, before he could finish his work, he died in 2004 of heart failure. Passing his map and all accompanying research to Milkos on his deathbed, now Milkos has set about finding these shipwreck treasures in a new Discovery Channel series called Cooper's Treasure. He told the press, quote, We want to bring to light, the new stories of the shipwrecks that have yet to be discovered, tell the story and share it with the world, and share it with the host countries that are allowing us to do the research. What we are trying to do, is to open a dialogue about the past with these host countries. End quote. I will keep you posted on any substantial finds they make. There are many mysteries left here upon our planet yet to be unraveled. Many truths from the past and facts within our future left to be uncovered. Space, however, the final frontier, is a place of literal infinite mystery. Many more than one could ever explore, yet the following we found particularly compelling. Discovered by the James Webb Telescope, under development from 1996 until its successful launch into space on Christmas Day 2021. Initially estimated to cost $500 million, however, having met many obstacles along the way and almost being cancelled altogether, this so-called fiscal black hole had a final figure closer to $10 billion. Yet the most expensive flat pack ever made by man was a complete success upon launch and, as mentioned, has spotted something which our channel finds of particular interest. as if a sign from the gods spotted many light years away. Yet, to be fully identified, there are, however, theories as to what it could be. Quote, it is currently thought to either be two galaxies colliding, or a single galaxy of this unique shape by coincidence, with the interaction having caused its shape, a representative of the Space Telescope Science Institute told Space.com. Quote, this may be the first time we've ever seen this particular type of object. Additional follow-ups would be required to figure out what it is with any certainty. It could be a single galaxy with an odd shape, but a merger seems like a more suitable fit," said Matt Kaplan, an assistant professor of physics at Illinois State University. He continued, The two distinct features could easily be merging galaxies with the upper part of the question mark being part of a larger galaxy which is getting tidally disrupted. Given the color of some of the surrounding background galaxies, this does not seem like the worst explanation. Despite how chaotic mergers are, double-lobed objects with curvy tails extending away from them are very typical." End quote. 
Was this fiery question mark created via a chaotic intergalactic collision? Or is it possibly a message from the gods to our community? Its true cause may for now remain a mystery, yet it is one within an infinite reality, which we find highly compelling. Hey guys! Now, I'm sure you're already aware of the strange incident that once occurred in the small county of Roswell, New Mexico in the year 1947. Subsequently covered up and wiped from the archives of history by the US government's Men in Black. But what many of you might not be aware of is the peculiar report made on July 15, 2008 by the Physical Sciences Department at Eastern New Mexico University in regards to an amazing discovery made at the crash site some years later by auto repairman Robert Ridge. While deer hunting in the area on the 4th of September 2004, Ridge found a chocolate-colored sandstone very close to the crash site, with a remarkable worked engraving visible on its front. It has become known as the Roswell Rock, measuring 5 cm by 4.3 cm and weighing 50.78 grams, with one end twice as thick as the other. The strange pattern has beveled edges and is raised more than an eighth of an inch up from the surface of the rock. During research attempts to decipher the pattern upon the stone, it was subsequently matched to an extraordinary crop circle, which occurred on August 2, 1996, at Liddington Castle in Wiltshire, England. The formation was made on standing wheat, yet on the rock the pattern is not raised, but beveled making this stone seem like a matching opposite piece to an as yet unknown puzzle. Lab test results concluded that upon the back of the stone, where three pits were visible, was likely where larger grains had fell out over time. However, a pattern was deliberately placed on the back, found with a series of embedded calcite-like crystals in the shape of an X or cross. They also discovered the stone had a strong magnetic attraction, narrowed down to the presence of magnetite. An Energy Dispersive Fluorescence Spectrometer, or EDXRF, confirmed the presence of this strange iron material. Strangely, when magnetic influence is over the thickest end of the rock, the rock turns counterclockwise. However, when above the lower crescent and circle, the thinnest end of the rock, the rock reverses and turns clockwise. Some have concluded this is a deliberately placed riddle in the form of a clue or message. Varying clockwise and counterclockwise plant lays are a fundamental characteristic of authentic crop formations worldwide. Eleven years on after he found it, Ridge thankfully still has the stone, which he states is in a safe deposit box most of the time. Apparently, he hasn't tried to sell it, and even agreed to allow Giorgio Socalos of Ancient Aliens to do some testing on it during a 2014 special of the History Channel's In Search of Aliens. When geologist Bill Dolman suggested that Ridge allow he and Giorgio to apply a grinder to the backside of the stone in order to collect some dust for analysis, Ridge reluctantly agreed, but became clearly emotional, even tearful during the process. It would appear Ridge does in fact have a deep emotional attachment to his find, but was cooperating with the History Channel's efforts to try to learn more about it via magnetic testing, CT scanning, and spectroscopic elemental analysis. Thanks to Robert Ridge's diligent efforts, the stone remains in existence. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.